Hi, this is Steve H. from MacProVideo.com to introduce you to the new reactor instrument, Razor. Razor uses additive synthesis, but in a whole new way. Usually when we think of additive synthesis, we think of oscillators, right, creating raw waveforms in some way or another. You know, our raw materials, they're rough, they're buzzy. We then have to filter them and envelope them, you know, sculpt them, to take out the frequencies we don't want and emphasize the ones that we do. After that, we usually send them into some kind of effects processors, like chorusing and reverb, to give them their final polished sound. Now, Razor uses additive synthesis, but in a whole different way. It uses 320 different partials or sine waves in its additive engine, which makes this whole system one big oscillator. These sine waves, when you put them all together, create very complex waveforms. And Razor gives you control over every sine wave or partial's frequency and amplitude over time, which is a whole new way of generating sound via additive synthesis. This upper area is your global voice and waveform display area. Below it in the middle are our synthesis controls, and down on the bottom are our modulators. So let's look at the global controls. Here we can control our polyphony, we can limit our voices, we can change the quality and set an output level. Down here in the voicing section is where we can globally change the pitch and the glide or portamento. And then there's some phase and random controls that determine how the partials react at the beginning of the sound. But my favorite section is right here, the graphical display. Here is where you see the partials in action, creating the waveform in 3D. There's a lot of different ways to view it, and it even has an oscilloscope. There are eight different settings, and each one has a different view of the partials at different stages of the synthesis process. The next section is the spectral clip. This allows you to limit some peaks that can build up in the filtration process. And below it is safe base. Safe base allows you to bring back the lower partials no matter how much you've filtered them. And this is the additive engine. Except that little area over here, this is the dynamic and shaping module. It's not part of the additive engine, but we'll get to that later. In the additive engine, you'll find all of your synthesis controls, and each one has its own on-off switch. Let's look at oscillator one. When you activate it, all of the controls spring to life, and by clicking on the name, you can bring up all of the different waveforms available in oscillator one and there are a lot of really cool ones. Now, to select a waveform, you click on it, and you'll notice that it is represented here, or click on another one, and it's represented here. That's how the selection is made, and the controls of oscillator one will always change depending on the type of waveform or oscillator that you're choosing. Now, oscillator two is pretty much the same. There are very subtle differences between them, and you'll discover those as you begin to play with it. But what's really cool here is that these two oscillators don't really need to be mixed because they're all part of the additive engine. Now, the middle section is where you'll find the controls that control filtration. And again, you click on it and you get all of the different filter selections right here. And there are some really unusual ones because of the 320 partials that you're really controlling. Check this out. You can see that it's not filtering as much as it's changing the spectral shape and the amplitude of the partials. And if that's not enough, there's a whole other filter that you can activate. Hey, this next section is called dissonance effects. And these are all kinds of cool pitch-based effects that you can apply to the partials, like, like beating or like a stiff string. You know how you pluck a string and it gets a little sharp and then flattens out? Or you can stretch or you can shift. And this is my favorite. You can centroid them. This is so cool. Check this out. Centroid allows you to take a whole spectrum of partials and slowly focus them into one. Here are all the sine waves. Now watch. They get squeezed into a single solitary sine wave. I love that. And that shows the power of being able to work with the additive engine with all of its controls over all those partials. Hey, this next section is called stereo effects. And though they have kind of standard stereo effects here, these are all created 
by messing around with those same sine waves. I believe this saves a lot of CPU, right? You don't have to have all these effects in here. You just play with the sine waves. Here's the reverb. You know, working with the additive engine, it's kind of like cooking with a microwave. Rather than putting something in the oven to heat it up, you just jiggle the molecules. It has the same effect. Hey, this next section is called Dynamics and Shaping. Now, this is not part of the additive engine, but this is where you can apply some dynamic effects at the very end of the signal path after all of the synthesis has taken place. Let's now look at the modulation controls. You have the three different envelopes, including the amplitude envelope, and two LFOs and sidechain. And you'll notice beneath every knob, there's these little ghost knobs, right? And some of them have labels on them. Those are the ones that are active. So if I navigate under one of these parameters, right, like let's say decay, and click right here, it brings up all of the different modulation sources that I can use to control that parameter. And I can also use external sources from a keyboard controller, for instance. So I'll choose LFO1. And you can see LFO1 appears there. If I grab that little shadow knob and turn it up, it allows LFO1 to control the decay. And I can pick any kind of LFO shape that I want. And you can see that it's controlling the decay and some stuff over there on the oscillator too. Very cool. And if I go to the decay control, I can kind of dig in and fine tune just how this LFO will affect this decay parameter. As you can see, Razor is a really powerful instrument and I've just barely gotten below the surface. I can't wait to dig in deeper. So this is Steve H, hoping you enjoy this Razor overview. And check out our other native instrument tutorials at macprovideo.com.